Okay guys, I guess that we can start and I'm going to talk about the misconception in a video entitled The Big Misconception in Electricity which is published by Veritasio. Actually, let me state first uh, clearly, I really like Veritasio channel and I strongly recommend it, but in this case although general idea that uh, the mm, uh, energy is not transferred by wires but through the field is essentially okay, wires still play some role in that and we would like, actually I would like at this point and my friends later uh, to discuss it a little bit and to clarify some issues in that episode, that particular episode, there was an issue and we're going to try to fix it and to clarify what's going on there so, what was the setup proposed in that video? actually, you have a battery which turned out to be, I guess, 20, 12 volts which is not important actually then just a simple plain switch and one meter apart there was a light bulb and although that's some sort of thought experiment in real setup uh, the wires are much shorter than here in that thought experiment uh, uh, the length of the wire was somewhat like this u-shaped uh, wire and <coughs> the length is one second times c which means that one half of the wire is c times one half of a second which is 1.5 about 1.5 times 10 to the 8 meters and the question is after you turn the switch on how long would it take to turn the light bulb on and offered answers are 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.5 uh, seconds which is you know something like to get light from here to here then one second, twice that then one over c seconds which is something we are going to discuss a little bit and none of the above uh, official result is this one although that's, that can be discussed because one over c uh, is a physical quantity that's uh, sluggishness of slowness of light that's reciprocal of the speed of light and this is 0.33 times 10 to the minus 8 a really small number because uh, the light is very fast seconds over meter the dimension is really important here seconds over meter okay uh, mm, so when you multiply 1 over c times 1 second 1 over c seconds that's not a time the result is not time so that cannot be an answer simply uh, maybe just remove uh, the mm, units but you see that won't work simply because uh, there is dimensional analysis which says that uh, the result should match in the dimension okay uh, to correct it let's assume that the intention was to say one meter over c and one meter over c is 0.33 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds which is about 3.3 nanoseconds which is something that we can sort of measure but is this so? is it possible that just turning this switch on one meter times uh, over the speed of light takes time to, for the field to establish and to turn the, li the light bulb on actually that's sort of tricky because it doesn't sound reasonable but maybe for someone but let's try to double check that using an experiment and let's try to design that let's put the figures down to the board and to see whether it, it would be possible to build something like this at least theoretically regarding copper the length of a copper four wires generally 1.8 times uh, 10 to the 8 meters overall length 6 times 10 to the 8 meters then regarding wire cross-section I decided to use this one which is 2.5 square millimeters which is common in house wire, home wiring for 16 amps so that would be quite reasonable to use something like this to turn, on, turn the light bulb on okay just multiply this and you'll end up with the volume of the copper of just 1500 cubic meters weight of that copper would be about 13,440 tons which is sort of lot and just multiply by today's prices of uh, copper 
and the cost would be 127 million American dollars, 127 times 10 to the 6 US dollars, which is sort of expensive and it is not likely that any National Science Foundation would uh, support that project. So it is not likely to get approved. But besides that, there is another issue. Um, resistance of the wire is neglected. It is assumed to be zero. That should be superconducting. That would be even more expensive than this copper one. But since we have all the data, we can compute the resistance of the wire, and it turns out that we would have uh, just a nice isolator. Insulation of uh, resistance of that wire would be 4.032 mega ohms on room temperature. So to invest that much to have a nice resistor with huge resistance, that won't work. Anyway. So Actually, there is no way that something like this should be or could be built or is reasonable to test the hypothesis that the travel, the wave would travel just in one meter over C seconds from the supply line consisting of a battery and the switch to the light bulb. Okay, so that won't work. Well, let's see. Maybe we can do something else. Something else. Uh, according to the proposed answer, length of the wire doesn't matter. Important distance is this one, one meter. So whether we take this long or take somewhat less than that, that would be okay. Okay, so I can shorten that. Okay, shorten, shorten. Let's remove the excess wire. And that should not affect the result. Okay? Because according to the that theory, uh, wave propagates from here to here. Okay. Next, actual setup doesn't care whether this is here or just flipped over. So we can flip over this wire and to connect it this way. This way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Okay, let me just connect it a little bit better. Okay, this one. And let's remove this one. So why is this important? It is important that for the result, this tiny memorization is not important, but actually it's much easier because here we would have setup, which maybe I can draw it a little bit better, just to remove this one here. Okay. 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 Here, let me put the switch, and here, let me put the battery. Okay. And then. Let's just beautify it a little bit and place the light bulb here. So the light bulb is here. Okay. So here we are. And what's here? Here we have a transmission line. We have a cable. And maybe it would be easy for us to use coaxial cable, which confines electromagnetic field within, which is going to be important later on. So, regarding the setup, regarding the claims, nothing prevents us to conclude that using coaxial cable as any other transmission line would not affect the final result. So, let's use the coaxial cable, and is it possible to build this? It is possible, and actually it's possible to measure the transmission time. We're not going to use one meter here, we are going to use about three centimeters, three centimeters, because here we are going to connect the generator, the signal generator, and here we are going to place just a resistor and measure the voltage. Here I'm going to place CH1, first channel of the oscilloscope, and then here channel 2, second channel of the oscilloscope. So our setup, and why our setup is like this, because, sorry, here is the thing. We already had it in our lab. What's that? That's for my sophomore class. They have electrical measurements, and I teach that. And I have a bunch of cables for them. Because they learn transmission line theory, and they have to measure reflections on the transmission line, and so on, and so on. And uh, I'm going to use that to build a setup. And the setup is, let me switch the camera, over here. Okay, camera. Oh, here is the setup. So, first of all, let me let me let me let me show you what's what we're having here. This cable here, this one, 
which was this one, is just for synchronization. If we remove that cable, if though it's not essential, but let me show you, then you won't synchronize. Occasionally, you'll get the pulse. That's just to provide synchronization between the scope and the signal generator. So, connected, we have a pulse. That pulse, okay, what is the voltage? I guess that I said five, four volts instead of five. High level, four volts, four volts. Okay, four volts, yeah, that's okay. And that's two volts per division, no, one volt per division. Let me place on the other channel the same way, one volt per division, and that's about four volts. Okay, so we have pulses. And these pulse, pulses are really narrow. These pulses are of the width of 40 nanoseconds. So from here to here, we have about 40 nanoseconds. I'm going to make them even shorter. So it would be just a blink of a light bulb, and we're going to check uh, how long does it take from the pulse to be started to the light bulb to be turned on. So I'm going to reduce the width to measure time easily to 20 nanoseconds, 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 okay. So we have a pulse. So yellow channel, at least I hope that you can see the colors, but I'm not really sure that that's so visible, is channel number, number one. And there is nothing on channel number two. So there is blue line down here. Okay, what is our load? Our load is not a light bulb. Our load is this one. Can you see that? Well, yeah. This is 50 ohm termination. So if it is not terminated properly, the amplitude rises. Why is that? Oh, I forgot to explain that. In our setup, there is some something more to simplify the results. Let me check the camera. Change the camera. The camera changed. So we have 50 ohms internal resistance here placed. Why? To avoid reflections. Because our transmission line has internal characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. So to avoid reflections, it should be terminated by 50 ohms, which is impedance of the cable. And here, the source should be with 50 ohms internal resistance. So that's the reason why, after we remove the load, the, the, at the sniffing point here, CH1, we had increase in the amplitude. It just doubled the amplitude. Okay, maybe I can show that again. Okay, so let me reduce. Okay, here is reduced. Okay, I'm going to reduce this one, I guess. And here, let me connect. Okay, so we have the pulse. Well, that's quite okay. Now, we can see that that pulse does not affect the second channel. It's not connected. So, in some sense, it is important to have a cable. So we're going to connect that. And to connect that, I'm going to remove the load from here, connect it to this T sniffing connector, and then use just a short cable, just a short cable, which is about less than a meter from here. Okay. I'm just going to put it for a short time. Then I'm going to connect it here. And then I'm going to connect all that here at channel 2. So what do we have here? Let me just adjust the scales. OK, the scales are adjusted. So we have a pulse. The pulse is slightly delayed. And that delayed, our time scale is 25 nanoseconds per division, which means that from here to here, one division is 25 nanoseconds. So just guessing, that's about 5 nanoseconds. We expected something like 3 nanoseconds per 1 meter, so it's more than that. Well, it's slight disagreement. But actually, the big, bigger disagreement would be when I place A somewhat longer cable. So the short one is going to be removed. Sorry for, you know, physical manipulation takes some time. Okay, but it's fine. Okay. Okay. It works. So do we have now? Uh, okay. Ah. Uh, I just disconnected it so the amplitude blew up. Okay. 
in here. Oops. Connected. Our delay is even bigger than before. Okay. And if we add another cable, cable number two, this is what my students are supposed not just to observe, but to measure, because they are informed about the length of the cables, and then they're supposed to compute what's going to happen, and to justify that according to transmission line theory. Okay, I can connect that, and add another cable, and then I connect. Here, what you see, there is nothing on the blue line, but you have two yellow ones. Why is that? Because you have reflection, because it is not terminated at the end. I can terminate it now. Oh, sorry. Exit, 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 exit. No, I don't need to. Ah, okay, that's it. I can terminate it now. This is not expected. Okay. When I place termination, like this one, you see, the second one disappears, okay? So we're going to connect that, and we're going to see how long does it take the signal to reach the second, the second um, channel. Whoops, longer the cable, longer the time delay, you see? Well, what's next? Maybe we can add some more cables, like this one. This one is really long. Okay. Let me disconnect from right here. Let me. Um, uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. This is number three. This is the end of number two. The end of number two gets to number three, and the end of number three gets here. And as you see, it takes even more time. Now we can even measure that. So um, cursor uh, type is time. So from oops, not this one. Not this one, this one, this one. Okay. This one. The maximum is somewhere here. And regarding channel 2, okay, and the difference is approximately, approximately, approximately 77 nanoseconds. So it seems nothing like 3 nanoseconds what we expected, about 3 nanoseconds per 1 meter. Okay, we can continue on. And I'm going to stop it now and to put all the cables I have to see what's going to happen. Okay, let me continue. What have I done? I just placed another set of cables for another bench for my students, just connected them in series, and the time increased. So, one set lasted about 77 seconds, what Cursor says. Yeah, the 77 nanoseconds, and now... Uh, channel, oh, oh, sorry. Cursor... Yeah. Number two, this is number one, yeah, okay. that's okay. And number two, cursor number two, cursor number two. I expect it to be somewhere about 160 nanoseconds or something like that because it's about the same. Huh? 191 nanoseconds, okay. Because you see, the cables are not of the same length and that's about it. And you see, also, the amplitude here is somewhat lower than here. And that's due to natural losses that we have here in these cables. I have more cables, and maybe I'll prepare some more results as a slideshow later on. So, let me discuss what's going on here. Let me switch to... The point that I initially announced is here. Coaxial cable confines all the field here in that isolator here in between the in inside of the cable. So there is no way for the cable 
for the field to jump from CH1 to CH2 and it is forced to pass through the wire, through the cables. And that's the point why the length of the cables affected the duration, affected the time delay since we turn on the voltage here until we get the voltage at the output. There is no field that can, no pointing vector, nothing that can carry energy directly from CH1 to CH2. It has to go all the way through the cable and that's the reason why the result, the time delay depends on the length of the cable. And it was easy to build the setup just using sophomore class uh, electrical measurements equipment that we have um, exercise number eight, transmission lines, and I used that to do this experiment. So finally, what? let's get back to the initial setup uh, in the big misconception in electricity. Actually, that the field carries the energy that's not a misconception. Pointing vector is not misconception. Just the model is oversimplified. And to establish the field at the light bulb, wires, they have effect. The wave, the field, has to follow the wires, has to follow the, that sort of environment, and it takes more time for the wave to travel from here to here. If we work with coaxial cables that confine the field within, there is nothing to worry about. Everything is inside the cable, and then length of the cable is sufficient to provide you with the information how long it would take for the signal to move from here to here. Just 3 centimeters, but 190 nanoseconds if you have enough cable. Actually, the speed, uh, the way it travels through this cable is not C, instead it's 2 about 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And why is that? That's uh, due to permeability of the insulated back here. And that insulated carries the field. The field is located there. Here you have electric field. Okay, so if this one is plus, okay, you have electric field and you have magnetic field that goes, its current is this way, this is just improvisation, goes this way. So, uh, inside the insulator inside the cable, there is field, there is pointing vector, and the energy is being forced to travel all the way through the cable to reach the load. Uh, what's going to happen with actual design? Uh, well, I don't know that. But I have a friend who is an electromagnetics expert in simulation, and he's going to address this issue. Also, I might provide you with some more experimental data, which would be boring for just this one first video. Thank you.